When the crocodile bit the elephant's trunk, he clearly did not realize that he was making the biggest mistake of his life. The enraged giant picked up the reptile and hit it on the surface of the water. And then he started trampling. Now you will see the other cases when predators received a steep rebuff from animals that should not have ever been messed with at all. One of the most epic battles involving rhinos that caught the camera lens ever. These lions decided to attack a heavyweight that could reach a weight of about three tons. And it must be admitted that the predators took the matter seriously. They assembled a combat group of experienced and seasoned hunters. Such numerical superiority could help the lionesses deal with another rhinoceros, but not with this particular individual, which turned out to be much more daring than the predators thought. The lionesses circled next to the rhinoceros and deliberately exhausted it. They squeezed the ring, swooped in on the enemy, attacked him again and again, but at the same time carefully immediately retreating when the enraged beast began to fight back. Experienced hunters wanted to make a massive enemy chase them. Then the rhinoceros would get tired, run out of strength, and go on the defensive. That would be the end of the battle. No matter how powerful the armor is, if you do not attack the enemy in response, sooner or later he will achieve his goal. Apparently, the rhinoceros understood this. Pay attention to his endurance. He furiously attacks the lionesses, but does not allow himself to be carried away. Stop as soon as he realizes that he will not reach his enemies at all. He doesn't panic. He doesn't fuss. Every punch and throw is verified. The rhinoceros pays attention only to those lionesses who come close enough to attack, and does not pay attention to the environment at all. No fuss. This is what saves the giant. Although he does not have a sharp horn, his ramming blow can break all the ribs of a lioness and crumple internal organs into a cake. When the hunter realizes that the rhinoceros is getting closer to them and the hunter or themselves begin to get tired, they have to retreat. The rhinoceros withstood the siege of an entire pride of lions, and he probably remembered these cats. Look at how another family of rhinos attacked a lion peacefully resting after lunch probably experienced herbivores know who they are dealing with and want to drive predators away. The lions needlessly angered such opponents. When this seagull managed to find a group of emperor penguin chicks that had strayed from adults, it was a real feast for the bird of prey. This chick is very, very large. Probably much larger than the predator itself, but it's very much practically helpless. They huddle together and try to cover each other up but the heart of the seagull is as cold as the climate in Antarctica. A ruthless bird of prey attacks the chicks, swoops on them, and grabs one of them with a strong beak. The massive chick resists, but is unable to give a decent rebuff due to the difference in strength. And there are adult emperor penguins nearby. They are all in the sea, hunting fish. The chick has no chance, but not all heroes wear capes. The lone penguin was passing nearby. Just look, it's such a funny feathered little baby with an elongated beak and round eyes. Even an adult adult penguin is smaller than a baby emperor penguin. That's just a brave heart beating in the baby's body. And the Adelies hate the Pomeranians, so the penguin bravely rushes at the seagull and takes away its prey. The Pomeranian is shocked. But the Adelie's pressure is too great, and he has to retreat while the huge chicks hide behind their small but brave defender. Just admit it. You guys, such a comical and cool scene at the same time deserves your like, does it not? And if you would like to see even more cases of mutual assistance among different species of animals, then let us about it in the comments. Wolves are one of the most effective predators. Each animal alone has great strength and developed hunting skills, and teamwork increases the chances of catching prey even more. If three wolves can take down a huge deer or even an owl, then how can an ordinary otter give them at least some resistance? It turns out it can. The predators clearly underestimated this incredibly agile opponent. The otter was far from the water, not in a winning position at all. 
but she does not give up and desperately resists. Thanks to its amazing flexibility, every time the wolf tried to grab the otter, it twisted and clung with its small but sharp fangs to the enemy right in the sensitive nose. And it happened several times. As soon as the wolf attacked, the otter immediately launched a counterattack. The rest of the wolves tried to grab the victim from different sides, stretch it out, and literally tear it apart. But the otter turned out to be more agile and flexible than some kind of snake. She dodged every throw on the run, moved with lightning speed, and seemed to flow between the enemy's paws like a living liquid. A little more and dexterous predators would have been able to catch the otter, but the intelligent animal knew where it was running away to. In a moment before the enemy's fangs closed in on its throat, the otter dived into a deep snow hole. The den turned out to be suitable for a small animal, but too narrow for wolves. And in South America, there are giant otters that are capable of even more impressive feats. For example, here the otters gave battle to the jaguar. But this is the largest predatory cat of the New World and the third largest panther in the world. But the otters were acting too smoothly. Against one, the jaguar would have been easily emerged victorious, but the whole pack was able to show the spotted aggressor that they should not have to be messed with. A large otter the length of a lynx's body, armed with very sharp teeth and great speed, is able to pat its very beautiful hide. Jaguars understand this. He tries to intimidate the pack so that he can rush into the water and attack one of them, snatch it out and take it to the land. But the otters are fighting back against the jaguar in real formation. He realizes that if he throws himself into the water, several otters will immediately attack him from all sides and drown him, and the jaguar retreats. and even one giant otter can overcome a small anaconda. Still, dexterity and resourcefulness play no less of a role for animals in combat than straightforward physical strength. These young cheetahs don't know who they're messing with just yet. Neither two of them, nor even five of them, would have defeated an adult rhinoceros, which can easily turn over a car with a couple of powerful blows of its horn. But the young predators do not understand which Terminator is in front of them. Well, okay, they'll understand now. The rhinoceros is even slightly surprised by the impudence of cats and will gladly teach them a lesson. Just now, he was a slow, almost motionless hulk that gave the impression of sleeping and too heavy monster. The cheetahs thought that they could sneak up and pounce and bite into his throat. It turned out that this small mountain not only has legs, but is also able to move them very well. The rhinoceros took such acceleration from the spot like a knight's horse, and went to a similar ram attack to sweep the predators out of the way. The rhino doesn't even seem to be trying to finish them off. If they get under their feet, he will break all of their bones. And if they manage to escape, it's also good. They'll remember who it's best not to mess with in Savannah. The mountain lion is one of the most dangerous and toughest predators of the New World. Although it belongs to small cats because of the structure of the larynx, it surpasses even a leopard in size. When this guanaco noticed the leap of the mountain lion, it was already too late to dodge, and the predator managed to jump on the back of the ungulate. And the herbivore's problems did not end there. It turned out that this is a mature female who trains teenage kittens. They have little experience, but they already have the strength. The guanaco was surrounded by four predators. What should I do in such a situation? Well, for the inhabitants of the prairies, the answer is obvious, to arrange a rodeo. The guanaco only seems clumsy because of its long neck and slender legs combined with a barrel-shaped torso. In fact, this horse has incredible endurance and knows how to keep a furious pace. The cougar is in shock. She didn't know who she was messing with. Her kittens are trying to come to the rescue, but do they only risk getting hooves on the head in vain? Just wait a minute. It seems that we don't know what kind of rhythm the guanaco has got. Yes, this is a real redneck dance. To 
is such a groovy rhythm, the guanaco famously throws the cougar off its back and literally jumps out of the paws of three of its kittens. Just look at how well the predators work. The life of the guanaco hangs in the balance, but its speed and reaction save the ungulate, which managed to gain speed and break away from the mountain lions. This crocodile is still young and has not yet injured full force, but thanks to its smaller mass relative to an adult, it can run very fast and attacks a whole family of wild boars. That's just the reptile underestimated the enemy. Perhaps the head of the family would attack a huge reptile to protect its relatives. These animals have incredible courage. However, then the fate of the boar would have been kind of sad. And this teenage crocodile turned out to be an equal opponent for him. At least that's what it seemed like at the first blow. Then it became clear that a crocodile is not worth even one fang of such a powerful fighter. The boar literally mixes the enemy with mud, tramples him, races on its fangs, rams, and forces the reptile to retreat. The herbivore's fangs are still not long and powerful enough to pierce the reptile's scales. But the numerous internal injuries certainly showed the crocodile that he had made a mistake in choosing a target. If the enemy is dangerous, the boars try to escape. This lioness decided that the boars were already in a panic, and their tactical retreat was the most common escape. She was hunting by herself and ran into a family of wild boars unexpectedly and quickly enough to catch one of them and tightly cling with fangs and claws. Did she win? As if not so. One of the boars noticed that a relative was in trouble and did not abandon him, but turned around to attack a twice as large predator. The ramming blow of the boar from acceleration turned out to be so powerful that the lioness not only flew to the side and released the prey from her teeth, she also did a real somersault in the air. The predatory cat did not expect this. Her belly was almost opened by the fangs of a cleaver and the lioness herself had to run away from the angry boars. Now dogs are the largest predators in Australia. It's even strange considering how many nightmarish creatures live there. But this is really the case. Against stray dogs, dingoes, and even pets, most of the local warm-blooded fauna is helpless. But when a dog mistakenly tries to attack a kangaroo, an unpleasant surprise awaits for it. This funny marsupial jumper is a real bodybuilder and kickboxer. Even the small relatives of kangaroos can give large dogs a decent rebuff with the help of a well-aimed and very sharp blows with two hind legs at the same time. Not a bad reception, isn't it? And large kangaroos generally pose a real danger to careless dogs. The fact is that the front paws of kangaroos are actually equipped with claws with which these vegetarians dig up juicy roots for themselves. The claws are sharp, and the pals are powerful. When a kangaroo strikes with them, it often aims at the eyes, or at least at the victim's head. Secondly, the words that kangaroos are kickboxers was not a metaphor. These animals move most of the time under their two hind legs. Therefore, they can deliver a whole series of blows with their forehands, make insidious grabs, catch in locks, and even strangle. And if the opponent moves a little further away, the kangaroo can deliver a crushing blow with its hind legs. Since a large individual is able to jump over a car, it is easy to imagine how great the power of such a kick is. At the same time, the kangaroo easily rests on the tail, which plays the role of the third leg, so it will not be possible to catch the moment and knock it off its feet. Kangaroos are also cruel and know how to use tactical advantages 100%. This dog is larger than the kangaroo, but on all four heads, it is much slower. The naive relative of the wolf thinks that he has driven the frightened victim into the water, but in fact, it is a trap. As soon as the dog gets close enough, the kangaroo catches the opponent by the scruff of the neck and drowns it. The composure with which a marsupial beast holds a choking dog underwater is a little scary, is it not? The dog was lucky that she was able to escape and survive, but she will never go near this opponent anymore in her life. The lioness clearly regretted attacking this wildebeest. 
Although usually a hoofed animal of this species just tries to escape, and the predator needs to catch and overwhelm it, this particular antelope turned out to be a real fighter. She managed to pry the lioness on the tips of her sharp horns and to deliver a very dangerous blow. The predatory cat survived only because the antelope slightly missed and did not get into her throat at all. But at the, all the same, the blow turned out to be very painful. The more massive ungulate simply trampled the lioness into the ground. The predator should be given credit. She counterattacked and tried to seize the initiative. But the determination of the antelope turned out to be harder than a stone. The herbivore even slipped. It was in such a hurry to pile on the lioness even more. The antelope lifted her on her horns, beat her, and then slammed her back into a tree. It turned out to be a mistake to get involved in a duel with such an enemy. If this lion recovers, then the wildebeest will be hunted only in the ratio of five predators per ungulate. This is not a unique case. Another antelope was able to fight off two lionesses at once. She raised the enemy on its horns, ignoring the bites of another lioness, and consistently repelled their attacks. And this antelope rebuffed a whole group of hunters at once. Just look how she flew over the ambushing predatory cats. And then, like lightning, she flew out of the encirclement, ran into the pond, and instantly broke away from the enemies. This hawk thought he was going to hunt helpless prey. He was mistaken. A squirmish with the most ordinary domestic rooster turned into a duel of almost equal rivals. No, not even equals. The rooster is clearly winning. In most cases, the task of a hawk is to catch up and catch prey. His goal here is just to survive. When the third bird of prey flew into this pen, it did not know who it was contacting. The fight of a rooster and a hawk resembles some kind of an action scene from martial arts films of old. You have to slow down the camera to show the details. Otherwise, the exchange of blows with clawed paws happens so fast that you just see blurred spots. The reaction speed of the fighters is amazing. The rooster blocks the hawk's blow, counterattacks. The daytime predator in turn parries the enemy's lunge, tries to rip open its stomach, but winds up fighting back. And all of this in just a few seconds. At the same time, the bird simultaneously balances with the help of their wings, part of the time staying in the air, part of the time flying over the opponent. And the hawk could not take advantage of the acceleration from the flight, he couldn't even maintain the advantage of a higher position. And the rooster just tears the enemy with its claws. They are inferior in strength to the arsenal of a bird of prey, but the rooster has much more experience fighting with equal enemies, whereas the hawk is used to hunting less determined prey. Experience and fearlessness do their job. Most often, lionesses hunt in groups. A group of predators sneaks up to the prey as close as possible, then one or two attack. The prey breaks into a run. If she manages to jump out of the clutches of the hunters, then she tries to escape, and those who have shown themselves lead the chase. At the same time, lionesses play the role of beaters. They do not lead prey in a random direction, but into the clutches of other lionesses, who wait from different sides and strike an insidious, thoughtful blow at the moment when the prey comes as close as possible. Here, the hoofed animal thinks that it has almost escaped, and now it is knocked down by a crushing blow from another lioness who seemed to have appeared out of nowhere. It was the same here. Only the lioness who was chasing the prey was lucky enough to catch up with her and pounce on her back. The antelope is in shock. She desperately resists, but the battle takes place in shallow water, and the water constrains her movements. She still desperately resists, fights, and does not allow the lioness to close her fangs on her trachea. The antelope wants to get ashore to fight off the lioness on its own rules. That's only when the young ulid is already approaching there. It realizes that it is expected. Several experienced lionesses are licking their lips and preparing for the decisive throw. The antelope cannot resist against so many enemies. A predatory cat, which has started hunting, gets to the throat, knocks down, digs in with its claws, and tries to drown. The others are waiting on the shore. They are ready to join in on the fun, but they delay. They cut off the last escape route. Is the situation hopeless for the antelope? The lionesses sure thought so, but they were wrong. The antelope turns around at the last moment and makes the only right decision. 
it goes further into the reservoir to a great depth. Their lionesses from the shore will not be able to attack her, since they are much lower than the antelope. It remains to deal with the lionesses on her back. The antelope gathers the remnants of its forces and arranges a real rodeo for its enemy. The lioness is shocked. She did not expect that the antelope would retain enough strength for such fierce resistance by this moment. The predatory cat still has a chance of success. It reaches under the lower jaw of the ungulate to squeeze its breath and quickly strangle. But the predator loses its stability, and the antelope throws it into the water. Now the predatory cat is in danger. A taller and angrier ungulate can drown it. A couple of well-aimed hoof strikes on the head, and the lioness will not see her cubs anymore at all. Therefore, the cat retreats and returns to the rest of the females in one piece. Meanwhile, the antelope swims across the lake and escapes. She won! Killer whales have a strange and pleasant feature. They are uncompromisingly cruel and brutal towards prey, but absolutely loyal to humans. The difference is so obvious that it raises questions. Why do whales, which literally throw large seals out of, the, out of the water, breaking all their bones, behave so carefully with divers, boats, and just people? What do you think? Share your opinion in the comments. The most interesting thing is that this feature of killer whales was noticed by their victims. This whale spotted the pinniped and began a chase. Although the prey is agile and fast, because the animal hunts fish itself, it has no chance against such a fast and strong enemy. But do you know why this sly man did this? The killer whale shouldn't have underestimated him. Instead of maneuvering further or trying to break away, the pinniped smart guy just jumped on the boat to the people. And that's it, the killer whale retreated. Even in the excitement of hunting, she did not attack the ship. Although these whales successfully crushed three times more massive icebergs and ice flows in order to feast on the seals that escaped on them. However, there was no aggression here. If the pinniped is near people, you need to stop. This is the principle of killer whales. Nice, isn't it? Of course, someone could say that if the pinniped was trying to hide anywhere and accidentally chose the side of the boat, but just look at how the poor guy is behaving. Having just escaped from the terrible mouth of a huge predator, this kid behaves with people like with friends. Even after experiencing stress, the wild pinniped is almost not even afraid of them. So he knew that he would be protected here. What do you think? Interestingly enough, similar behavior can be traced further down the food chain. Sea lions themselves hunt penguins in the same way that killer whales hunt pinnipeds. And here is a similar phenomenal case. A sea lion almost caught up with a penguin who jumped on a ship to people at the last moment. Apparently, the intelligence of birds should not be underestimated either. It is curious that pinnipeds can chase penguins on land, but here the chase is over, and the predator gives up. He also does not want to get involved with people and show aggression towards their vessel. It would be funny if the penguin prey also tried to escape from humans. Can you imagine? The penguin is chasing the fish. It jumps out of the water and gets on board the boat. However, if the vessel is fishing, it will be a little bit awkward. This Indian lioness found what she thought was an easy prey. A slow-moving but dense armadillo that can neither fight effectively nor escape. But the predatory cat should not have underestimated the power of the enemy's armor. The armadillo twisted into a ball and put up its defense against the fangs and claws of the lioness. And you know what? It worked 100%. The predatory cat tried to open the victim's defenses for several minutes. She attacked him, beat him, bit him, tried to stretch him, turned him over, and all to no avail. Do you think this is the end? Of course not. More lionesses have come. Three large predatory panthers against one armadillo, which is three times smaller than each of the cats. But even with joint efforts, they could not do anything at all with this animal. The armadillo's defense is just incredibly effective. It seemed that a little more and it would be destroyed. It seems that the lionesses have found something to cling to and now they will open the tangle into which the beast is closed. But no, he doesn't care about all their efforts. 
As a result, the lionesses simply gave up and began to spend more energy on such a stubborn and protected enemy. The armadillo waited for the lionesses to go about their business and calmly unwound, after which he went in search of food himself. Moreover, if you think that the armor of this animal can only help in a blind defense, then you are mistaken. This snake thought it could easily fend off such a small and funny predator. A bite, and... but no, it's useless. The armadillo easily avoids getting poison into its body due to both the protection of the armor and the reaction speed. And then the armadillo grabs the snake and deals with it in a few seconds with the help of its unexpectedly strong jaws. This cat was hunting on the roof and was able to catch his lunch. In general, domestic cats are considered more effective predators than tigers, if we consider the ratio of successful attempts to catch a meal compared to fail ones. But something went wrong here. The cat clearly perceived this flock of crows simply as a dark decoration for his exploits. Well, these boys wouldn't dare attack him, and even for no reason would they. These are not falcons or eagles, just ordinary silly crows. But you shouldn't have underestimated them at all. Increasingly, it is possible to observe that birds of the crow family, which live in cities, perceive nesting sites as their own territory. Being incredibly smart, these birds try to take care of their safety of their own home. The cat didn't provoke them, but they still see him as a threat, and they're attacking. The mustached hunter did not expect such arrogance, but the crows also turned out to be unexpectedly good fighters. They are brave, strong, and able to act as a team. Just pay attention to how the birds want to teach the cat a lesson and kick him off their roof. They swoop down on the cat and inflict not at all dangerous, but very painful blows to the head, body, and paws. The crows evaluate the opponent, and they act too fast for even such a nimble predatory beast to go get them especially since the blackbirds attacked from different sides. Would you be able to throw the cat off the roof? Great! No? Well then, then at least let's make his stay here so unpleasant that he leaves our territory forever. The cat, of course, cannot dine in this unpleasant company. He is angry, but he feels helpless. It seems that the lesson of crows will work, and this dexterous predator will not really threaten them, but will go to look for food elsewhere. The main advantage of the Impala is its incredible jumping ability and maneuverability. These ungulates are very fast, but when you're surrounded by a dozen hyena-like dogs, speed is not a guarantee of success. Pay attention to how smart and cunning predators drive their prey. They managed to correctly understand where the Impala would run, cut off its escape routes, and were able to surround the ungulate. Experienced predators understood that the herbivore had an advantage due to its longer legs. Therefore, the Impala will run along the sandy shore to take full advantage of this advantage. If she tries to hide in the bushes, she will just get confused and the dogs will catch up with her. And the Impala did just that. It ran away from the hyena-like dogs along the pond. That's just how she rushed straight into the jaws of the ambushed opponents. Do you think this is the end? Of course not. The Impala swims great. Thanks to her excellent reaction, she literally jumps out of the grass of carnivorous animals at the very last moment and cinematically flies into the water. All the same long legs give her an advantage here too. The animal quickly breaks away from the enemies and swims away from them. Except there's a herd of hippos grazing on the other side. Of course, the Impala poses no threat to them. But these giants are very fiercely defending their territory. Moreover, their anger may not even be caused by a direct danger from a predator, and not by the fact that another herbivore can lead it. Hippos don't care about that at all. Their anger may simply be caused by the noise that an Impala makes in an attempt to save its own life. An enraged three-ton hippopotamus rushes to intercept the ungulate. He is so serious and is not going to just scare the animal that has just escaped. Instead, it opens a huge mouth that can easily fit the entire impala inside it. The crushing force of a hippopotamus bite can break a hoofed animal's spine and legs and pierce through long fangs. But the incredibly cold-blooded impala dodges this time as well. 
Moreover, she manages to avoid being bitten by an aggressive giant at the very last moment, so that he does not have time to turn around and continue with the attack. The ungulate was on the line twice in a few minutes, but its enemies underestimated the secrecy and luck of its victim. The Impala escaped the grip of the hippopotamus when they were separated by a distance of several bombs, and was able to get ashore away from the other hippos. And finally, the ungulate runs to safety. It broke away from the hippos, and the dogs are generally on the opposite shore and will not risk swimming across the pond with such formidable guards. One of the most epic cases when an herbivore was able to choke both predators and larger aggressive animals that it would not just give up at all. Few things in life motivate you to never give up as well as the example of this zebra. The lioness was able to catch up and catch the striped horse, but did not really know what kind of stubborn and strong animal she was really dealing with. A predatory cat pounced on the zebra and straddled it. Just look at how an experienced huntress throws a zebra off balance. She purposely tries to roll her on her side while clinging to her with her sharp claws, and the lioness's grip is incredibly strong, and besides, she bit by the zebra by the scruff of the neck. It hurts the ungulus, but it understands that if it gives up, allows itself to be overwhelmed, it will hurt even more. So with furious fury and tenacity, the zebra jumps and tries to throw the lioness off its back. But finally, the hind legs of the predatory cat are on the ground, and she is still trying to hold the zebra with her weight because she expects that the prey is exhausted, as if not so. The brave ungulate is gaining speed, and the fall of the lioness was inevitable, although every second of this fight was tense and dangerous for the zebra. Here the lioness set up a perfect ambush. A high and steep hill completely hides the predatory cat. She looks out from behind the thick grass and sees that the zebra is walking right into her paws. The lioness worked just perfectly and chose the moment when the victim was, has almost no chance to dodge her capture. Almost, because the zebra did something fantastic. She's probably on the athletics or acrobatics team here. The horse pushed off from the walls of the hill, right on the run, and did a complete 180. After that, the ungulate took acceleration and ran away from the lioness from a slow start. No matter how dexterous that this ungulate was, the zebra could not overcome the inertia, so it braked for a brief moment. This was enough for an experienced hunter to do a lightning strike into the victim's back. But the zebra doesn't really care. It immediately throws out its hind legs in another strike. The lioness was lucky that she let go of the grip. If the hooves flew into her jaws, the predatory cat would simply have nothing to eat. As a result, the zebra was able to break away from the predator that had lost its run. This group of wolves are experienced hunters. They saw different things in life, including how mothers fiercely fight for their cubs. But this is the first time they see a berserker moose and did not really expect such a development. Wolves chase their preys for quite a long time. Usually moose can keep a great pace and many miles break away from the chase. In addition, the moose is an incredibly huge animal whose physical strength is often underestimated. But this giant can reach a mass of only a little less than a ton. And the force of its impact is capable of breaking a wolf's neck. So here, the female and the cub took advantage of all their advantages. She really ran from her pursuers for a long time, but the wolves drove her into a small lake. It would seem that a longer-legged animal has an advantage here, because the wolf needs to jump out of the water to grab at the throat. But that is just the predator's attack, the female only in the second place. Their main target is the calf. They distract the moose to get close to the baby. The wolves know that the mother will desperately protect him and forget even about her own safety. But the predators were wrong. It looks like the moose caught the courage of the battle and lost control of its movements. She tried to fight off the club, but got carried away, went on an attack of the wolves, and delivered a powerful hoof kick right at her calf. He is in shock and almost choked. It seems that this only angered the moose even more, who went on to fight with the wolves. The predators did not expect such a development. They rushed at both of them. The wolf's fangs bit into the cub, and the moose went for a battering ram. Doesn't she understand what she's doing? In any case, the moose missed. 
Just look at how the wolves dodged her punch. The predator that held her club in its teeth didn't even release its grip at all. All this time, he held the calf in his teeth, strangled it, and drowned it. And the enraged female, it seems, did not even notice her mistake and got out onto the shore, where it was more convenient for her to continue the fight. Did she just abandon her offspring? Huh, <laughs> just the mother of the year. While she got out of this mess alive, the wolves really underestimated her berserker temper. But the predators don't mind. They had lunch with the calf. What do you think about this situation? Let us know your opinion in the comments. Everyone knows the stubborn nature of donkeys, but few people know that this is not their main feature. These herbivorous animals stand out much more for their ability to fight. Didn't expect it? So these hyenas also did not think that a funny animal with long ears, a vulnerable neck, and a funny elongated muzzle could literally trample a dangerous predator that could even fight a panther one-on-one. -on -one. The stubbornness of the donkey is also manifested in its bloodlust. This animal is usually calm and peaceful, but if it feels threatened, it will not stop by simply scaring off the enemy and even more so will not try to escape. Are you running into a donkey? Then get ready for a long duel, as a result of which the ungulate will also mock the loser to teach him an unforgettable lesson. As you can see, the main weapon of the ungulate is its jaws. It can kick, but in terms of limb strength, it is inferior to larger ungulates like horses. But teeth are another matter. In nature, donkeys are residents of arid regions and places with a rather harsh climate. The vegetation there is sparse and, more importantly, very tough. The donkey has no fangs and the teeth are flat, not sharp. But this is not a flaw, but a real weapon. The fact is that in order to feed on the toughest, hardest, and prickliest vegetation, donkeys have developed a specific chewing technique. They do not bite off, but grind food like a steel construction vice. Kind of scary, isn't it? Now this hyena will be afraid to approach such an eared monster. The donkey shakes the opponent from side to side. He understands perfectly well. The nape of the neck is the place where the grip makes the enemy most defenseless. That is why the animal is aiming exactly there and trying to grab the enemy by the scruff of the neck. Did you succeed? That's it, it's a clear victory. There was no chance to escape from such a powerful grip of its enemy. Dodge and counterattack too. Maybe the donkey's arsenal of fighting techniques is not very wide, but he mastered it perfectly. But the main thing is the typical donkey's stubbornness in the context of combat use. The donkey knows that the main thing in learning is method and repetition. Even when the enemy is desperately clinging to its teeth like a ragged rag, the donkey does not calm down at all and continues to pull and bite and shake the enemy from side to side. The neck, which seemed to be such a vulnerable place, turns out to be so powerful that the donkey carries a heavy opponent without any problems whatsoever. Sharp twitches, blows, and the force of teeth can cause fatal damage to the cervical vertebrae, destroy blood vessels, and irreversibly tear muscles. And this is all despite the fact that the skin itself is likely to remain intact. But even if the predator is lucky and the donkey grabs him only by the skin, the pain from the grip is the ungulate is terrible. These carnivorous beasts will no longer associate with such a dangerous enemy. Swimming into the territory of hippos is the biggest mistake a crocodile can make. There is no longer any question of attacking these herbivores. The reptile, even in full force, can only cope with a young individual and only when the hippopotamus is alone. An adult powerful beast is literally too much for a crocodile. Moreover, hippos hate crocodiles and respond to reptilian aggression with tenfold rabies. The behemoth will not simply try to avoid confrontation, will not try to repel the attack and escape. Perhaps the crocodile, with its manner of suddenly attacking from under muddy water, considers itself a living inevitability. Well, if a stupid overgrown lizard crosses the path of a hippopotamus, the same thing awaits her as Thanos. The hippopotamus will not stop until it simply turns the opponent into a chop. There was a lot of evidence that the huge mammals attacked the reptiles first. I admit it, you need to be a really brave beast to be the first to pounce on an armored crocodile with a fanged mouth as long as an adult's leg. 
But this behemoth doesn't care about the arsenal of its enemies. These giants reach about three tons in weight. Their rounded bodies have a shape from which the reptile bite will simply slide off. At the same time, hippos can move frighteningly fast, both on land and even more so in water, where they are also very maneuverable. Their skin is smooth, but thick enough to protect even better than the powerful scales of a crocodile. In general, the behemoth wins on all counts, but especially on the level of aggression. It is curious that hippopotamus can tolerate the presence of a crocodile while the reptile behaves calmly. But if she gets too close, she is perceived as a target. The most epic thing is when a crocodile finds itself surrounded by a huge herd of hippos. Of course, this is a rarity, and the shots you see are unique. Pay attention to the brutality with which angry hippos deal with adult and powerful crocodiles. A reptile that could catch a bull is absolutely helpless against such a crowd of aggressive enemies. She can't do anything against them. Crushing blows with her jaws fall on the reptile and take off her armor, like a stone crumpling paper. But the most amazing thing is that herbivorous aggressors pass the crocodile to each other like a toy. It's like a reptile is a simulator where hippos practice their fighting skills. But this looks pretty epic, doesn't it? The hippos are literally thrown around by the reptile, whose weight is much greater than that of an adult. Well, if other crocodiles are watching this scene, then they will never approach the reservoir again, even within shooting distance. Which case today, when the predators were given a tough rebuff, impressed you more than the others? Let us know your impressions in the comments. We would be very interested to know your opinion, and also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more exciting news stories about the natural world.